We are so happy to welcome you to 30 Days of Prayer with Bishop Littman. And I want to invite you to visit my website, bishoplittman.org. There are blogs there that will feed your mind with insight and the wisdom of God as we look at everyday things and make relative comparisons to see God's handiwork in our lives. I want to encourage you to go and read Keeping Your Head Above Water. It is on the website right now. And while you're there, be sure to scroll down to the bottom, and I believe it says subscribe, which will enable you to be able to be abreast of all of our new content as it is loaded. And so we are truly thankful today and truly grateful today for all God is doing in our lives. Today, I want to share a quick teaching with you for our meditation during these Monday through Friday prayers. And today we're going to be talking about Philippians chapter number one, verse number 25 through verse number 30. If you want to grab your Bible, go ahead and do that really quickly. Or if you're able to open up another app on your phone or your device, I want to share with you from Philippians chapter one, verse number 25 through verse number 30. And today we're going to call this mini teaching an essential worker, an essential worker that again, that's Philippians chapter one, verse 25 through verse number 30 in the living Bible translation. Of course, right now we're hearing a whole lot about essential workers. Uh, today, what that means is that you hold a job or a vocation wherein you have to go to work in order for things to function. The hospital cannot close uh, and several other industries cannot close. And so that's how essential workers are defined in terms of the world that we live in today as of this very moment in April of 2020. However, God has a different definition for an essential worker. God looks at an essential worker as a person who has purpose, that if they fulfill that purpose, it will bring power to other people. And when we look at the book of Philippians, that's exactly what we see here. For we see uh, that the apostle Paul was an essential worker without his work, without his efforts without him, the church and the saints at Philippi would have found themselves without purpose themselves. And so here's what I'm trying to say is that when you fulfill your purpose that God has put you on the earth for, you will help others to discover and fulfill their purpose. So let's look at the word of God today very briefly. Philippians chapter number one, verse number 25 and 26 in the Living Bible translation reads like this. Yes, I am still needed down here. And so I feel certain I will be staying on earth a little longer to help you grow and become happy in your faith. My staying will make you glad and give you reason to glorify Christ Jesus for keeping me safe when I return to visit you again. I want you to pay close attention to that 25th verse. Paul says, yes, I am still needed down here. If you were with us on yesterday, and if not, I want to invite you to go back and catch the replays. I think it will bless you. Go back and catch from the very first teaching that we began in the book of Philippians chapter number one. But if you were with us on yesterday, you will recall that Paul is at a point at which he is nearing the end of his life. And he is aware that he is coming close to the end of life. He has fought a good fight. He's finished his race. He's kept the faith and he's finished his course and all of that. He's established churches. He's established preachers. He's trained them, taught them in his lifetime. He wrote what would become two thirds of the New Testament. He had been shipwrecked, beaten, battered, jailed, <laughs> hauled in and out of court. And at this point in his life, Paul is both tired and he's also aware that there was something greater that God has in store for him called being in the presence of God through the means of death. And so Paul says to us in the previous passage that I'm really torn in between whether or not I should be here or whether or not I should go on to be with the Lord, because going to be with the Lord, would give him his rewards and it would be far more rewarding to be with the Lord than it would to remain here. And yet Paul is in this straight where he's trying to really decide, if I had a choice, would I want to be here or would I want to be at home with the Lord? 
And so Paul says to, to the church of Philippi, it'll be better for you if I stay here because I can keep on encouraging you, keep on building you. And Paul living according to the purpose of his own life teaches us that there is a purpose that is greater than our own pleasure. And that is that we should look at our lives as an opportunity to continue to minister to others. Paul in verse number 25 comes to the juncture and the point where he recognizes, you know what? I am essential. And I want you that is listening or looking at me right now, whether you're catching this on the phone or on replay or even on a podcast, I want you to know that Philippians 125 very much is relevant to your own life. I am still needed down here. And so I want you to know that no matter how you may feel, if you feel helpless, if you feel that you don't have anything to contribute, if you feel uh, isolated alone or like uh, you're all by yourself or like there's no real purpose in your life, Philippians 125 is for you. Yes, I am still needed down here. I want to challenge you that are watching me on Facebook or, or YouTube. Type that in. I am still needed. Come on. I am still needed. Those of you on the telephone who are listening to this, make sure you write that down today. Put it on that magnet on your refrigerator. I am still needed. I need you to get that into your spirit. You are an essential worker for Jesus Christ. You may feel if you're laid off right now or if your boss told you, hey, we're going to have to shut down for a while. You may feel inessential, unimportant, unvalued. You may feel very low esteem right now. You may feel like your life's work, even maybe what you went to school to train for, is of zero use right now. You may feel as if your future has been phased out and that this is a permanent situation. But I need you to know, Philippians 125 relates to you. I am still needed down here. If you have family anywhere, they need you. If you have children in your family, they need you. If there's someone you care about and, they, and you love, they need you. If you are friends with anybody, they need you. And you must declare, I am still needed down here. Paul says, I am still needed down here. And so I feel certain I will be staying on earth a little longer to help you grow and become happy in your faith. My staying will make you glad and give you reason to glorify Christ Jesus for keeping me safe when I return to visit you again. All right. So here's the first point today. An essential worker, number one, helps others to grow. An essential worker helps others to grow. Your life is essential when you make it your purpose and ambition to help others to grow. That's number one. When you are an essential worker, you look beyond your own needs and you look to help others with theirs. I have discovered that when I have a need, if I help someone else who has a need, it won't be long before my need is met just as well. Because that's how God works. There is a law of reciprocation which simply means if you do, Welcome it will be done to back to life. you. And you must understand that God won't let you outdo him and that God won't let you go without. But instead, God will make sure you have everything you need to do everything he's called you to do. But you've got to help others to grow. You know something that someone else needs to know. You have resources someone else needs. You have experience or skills or knowledge. And you may say it's so minuscule. It's so small. Who needs what I have to offer? Well, maybe you haven't met them yet, but there's somebody on the earth who is looking for what you have to offer. There is a receptacle that is looking for what you have to pour out. I don't care if it's cooking a cake. I don't care if it's teaching a person how to change their oil. I don't care if it's teaching a person how to handle their finances, whatever it may be. You're essential and you have something to contribute. Don't leave this earth full. Leave this earth 
empty. What do I mean by that? Simply, don't leave this earth full of all of the deposits that God has put on the inside of you. When your time comes to die, this is what Paul recognizes. When your time comes to die, you should die empty because you have poured out everything God has put in you to other people. He says to us in the 26th verse, my staying will make you glad and give you reason to glorify Christ Jesus for keeping me safe when I return to visit you again. Here's the second lesson we learned today. An essential worker believes with others. An essential worker believes with others. Now, what do I mean an essential worker believes with others? Well, the 26th verse says, my staying will make you glad and give you reason to glorify Christ Jesus. Here's what Paul is saying. If I keep living and keep producing and keep giving and keep sharing and keep loving you and keep leading you to higher heights in the Lord, that will make you glad. But more importantly, it will make you a stronger believer in Jesus Christ when you pour into others and others pour into you. And you will have a mindset, Paul says to the church at Philippi, to glorify Christ Jesus for keeping me safe when I return to visit you again. So when we are essential, we have to learn to believe with other people. We ought to be praying with others, not just in a time of crisis or, or pandemic, but at all times. Luke 18 one says men ought always to pray and not to faint. Well, the Lord is telling us, don't wait until bad things happen to start praying. But there ought to be times of prayer where you are connected with other prayer warriors and believing with others for what God is going to do in your lives collectively. Not just pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. But sometimes you ought to call someone or text someone or email someone and say, what can I pray with you for? Because when you believe together like this, Paul is teaching us that when you believe together and pray together, they will bring so much joy into the hearts and lives of all involved when God answers that prayer request. Right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let's move on. I love this. Now, verse 27, Philippians chapter one. But whatever happens to me, remember always to live as Christians should. So that whether I ever see you again or not, I will keep on hearing good reports that you are standing side by side with with one strong purpose to tell the good news. This is a powerful verse. Whatever happens to me, Paul says, remember this saints of God live as Christians should. So that whether I ever see you again or not, I will keep on hearing good reports that you are standing side by side with one strong purpose to tell the good news. Here's number three today. An essential worker motivates others toward God. Again, an essential worker motivates others toward God. Notice Paul's words. Whatever happens to me, don't put all your faith and hope and trust in me as a man. But put all your faith, hope and trust in the Lord who gave you this man. And whatever you do, live as Christians should. Essential workers, as believers, we should be motivating others toward God. Now, oh, this is so good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Paul did not motivate them toward himself. He didn't say, focus your eyes on me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. It's all about me right now. He didn't do that. He's in the pits of life, yet he did not turn all the attention on his bad situation. Instead, Paul used his life as a sign to point toward the Lord and essential workers will point the attention towards the Lord and encourage others to live as Christians should 
that even if I never see you again, he says, I will keep on hearing the good reports that you're still standing side by side with one purpose. That purpose is to tell the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, let's look finally at verse number 28 through 30. Because an essential worker, lastly, directs others' focus to God. Now, watch what he says in verse 28. Fearlessly, no matter what your enemies may do, they will see this as a sign of their downfall. But for you, it will be a clear sign from God that he is with you and that he is has given you eternal life with him. For to you has been given the privilege, not only of trusting him, but also of suffering for him. Verse 30, we are in this fight together. You've seen me suffer for him in the past, and I am still in the midst of a great and terrible struggle now, as you know so well. So Paul again points the focus back to God. Notice what he says. Verse 29, for to you has been given the privilege, not only of trusting him, but also of suffering for him. Paul is saying it's a privilege to suffer for Jesus. It's a privilege to have that kind of time where you can recount it and say, Lord, thank you. I'll suffer for you. I'll take on the strain. I'll endure the pain because all of it is for your glory. All of it is for your honor. All of it is so that you can show yourself strong and mighty through me. You know, I often use the analogy as I get ready to pray of eyeglasses. That when we go to the optometrist, pearl lens crafters, wherever you may go, Zenny Optical for those that like to do it online. It's nice that when you stand there and You take your old frames off and you're putting on new frames. You can't really see yourself depending on your vision, but you have that mirror and you're looking at what do I look like in these frames? And you're thinking, are they comfortable? And more importantly, is this an enhancement to me? Will I look better with these frames? But here's the thing about it. After you leave with your new prescription, you'll walk out and Once you receive your new glasses, your new frames, you'll get compliments. Somebody inevitably is going to say, hey, you're wearing new frames. Or maybe even a stranger might say, I like those frames. Those are very nice. Where'd you get those from? But here's the thing I want you to understand. Eyeglasses are not meant to be seen. They are meant to be seen through. Don't miss that. You and I are eyeglasses. But we are not meant to be seen. We are meant to be seen through. We are meant for Jesus to be seen through us, not for us to be seen. That's why. Oh, it's a privilege to suffer for him, that he might be seen through our lives. Well, let's pray. Send your hearts up to the Lord right now. Those of you who are listening Raise your hands up to the Lord right now and let's go before the throne of grace and ask for the touch of the master. Keeping in mind that we need him and we are essential and God has called us for such a time as this. Let's pray, my family. Father, thank you for these powerful words of the Apostle Paul that Help us to understand we are essential. We are needed. We are necessary. Thank you, O Lord, for equipping us with the knowledge that without you at work in our lives, we are nothing. God, thank you because Paul is helping us to center our thoughts around the reality that we exist And we live and we were created for the sole purpose of helping others to find you. So, Lord, forgive us for every time that it has been about us. Forgive us, O God, 
for every time we have magnified our experience over magnifying our existence. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for every time that we have failed to give you honor and glory in it, through it, and for it. Father, we repent today for elevating our messes over our master. And God, restore us that we may glorify you while we're going through life's journeys. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for reminding us we're necessary, we're essential, and we have the ability to change lives with our behavior. Now, God, in this time of going through, let it all be about you. You get the glory, you get the honor, you get the praise, because you alone are worthy of all of the praise. Touch the sick. Bless the doctors, the nurses, the operating room staff, all hospital workers. And God, touch all over this world. And don't forget to lay your hands on President Trump. Surround him with people with wisdom. And give him a listening ear. Give him discernment with what to say and what not to say. Give him respectful responses. God, we pray that he would show humility and humanity towards your people. And Father, meet every need now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you, my friends. Why don't you just give God some worship right there in your homes? He's here. I sense his presence. His power is among us right now. Remember, you are essential. You're needed. You have a purpose. You have a call. You have a ministry. Don't die full. But just like Paul felt like he was at the end of it all, squeeze life out to the last drop so that you will know you are an essential worker. Let me quickly remind you of our current Bible study series, how to get more out of Bible study. This week we launched three tips for interpreting scripture. And I want you to go and catch that on YouTube. You can find it on my channel, Dr. A. Reginald Littman, or you can go to New Mountaintop Baptist Church. You can watch it on both. Subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you'll get all new notifications as they come available. We love you with the love of the Lord here at Bishop Littman Live. Thank you for joining me Monday through Friday right here. Join us next time for 30 Days of Prayer. Please share this video so others may see it. I love you. God bless you. And enjoy your day.